Test one, two. All right, this is Bro Law. This is the Akai MPK Mini Editor tutorial. Akai Professional MPK Mini Editor. This is the manual. It doesn't come with a hard copy manual, but it's only about, what, 10 pages. So uh, I advise you to print a copy out from uh, the software that's provided with the Akai MPK mini editor software CD or you can go to uh, akaipro.com search for the uh, Akai MPK mini and go to the download section and you can download one and print it out this uh, is my third tutorial and so uh, I'll be enunciating I'll be using very simple English because a lot of uh, people that use the Akai MPK Mini are not Americans <laughs> and uh, they don't speak Ebonics. So I ain't going to be able to holler at y'all like I want to holler. But I'll be uh, very boring. <laughs> I'll be very mundane and very monotone so that the understanding of this tutorial will be as simple as possible. Okay, once again, it's Brella Akai MPK Mini Editor Tutorial for the Facebook group Akai MPK Mini. That's Akai MPK Mini. As a matter of fact, let me pull that up. Make sure that your MPK is connected via USB before you open the Akai MPK Mini Editor Program. The top left hand side, you'll see a MIDI info box. Make sure if you're using XP, you click USB audio device and then you click done. If you're using a Mac, you'll select the MPK Mini and you'll click done. Once you click done, then you will get the Akai MPK Mini Professional editor screen and it will basically pull all the information from the Akai MPK Mini and place it on the screen here. On the screen we have several different knobs, buttons, fields, and arrows that could be quite confusing to someone who doesn't know what they mean. So, to clear that up, this area controls the presets for the MPK, and I'll be going over that. This area controls the knobs on the MPK. This area controls the pads in bank one. This area controls the pads in bank two. So you notice you have eight pads here. Switch to bank two. You have eight pads here. Total of 16 pads. If you're setting up your MPK for that MPC field, right? So <clears throat> this area controls basically the keys and the knobs uh, at the same time. Um, basically, it has the uh, MIDI function here, which channel that the information is going to be sent on. So if I highlight this or if I click on it, I can drag it up to uh, 16 MIDI channels, but we're going to keep it on channel 1 for right now. These are the keys. These are the pads. And these are the knobs. Okay? This area here are the pad controls. 
these two buttons are the appreciator. This is the sustain knob. This is the program knob. This is a uh, octave up, octave down. Okay, so we'll be going over all of those buttons and what they do. Okay, so when we look at the screen here, we see get preset from device. What this controls is the presets that you have loaded inside of the MPK. If I was to hold down the program key and I press this program one, program two, program three, program four, if I press program one, the MPK automatically goes to those settings. And those settings can be saved in the MPK. And basically four sets of settings or four presets can be saved inside the device itself. Just hold down the program key, hit program two, program three, or program four. Now if you notice on program two, my appreciator lit up. We'll get into that a little bit later. Let's go back to program one. If you notice here, in get preset or program, I kept saying program, preset, program, same thing. Preset 1 is the same as program 1 here. Preset 2 is the same as program 2 here. Preset 3 is the same as program 3. And preset 4 is the same as program 4. Okay, those are settings that you have saved inside of the MPK that affect the whole device itself let's go into what those presets control so let's just say we're in preset one or program one and we're looking at the controls of the device well we know that we're sending uh, information from mid to MIDI channel one if I press octave down that basically goes down one octave and if you see here we have the choice of going down 12 octaves or going up 12 octaves. You can control this here. And you can also control it with the keys. Okay? If you notice you go up, the high octave lights up. You go lower, the lower octave lights up. When they're not lit up, then you know that you're on zero. Okay? So, transpose octave up, octave down. Okay, now that we've went over what the presets do and they control the entire device, let's go into preset one and get an understanding of what preset one is controlling. And it's basically controlling the whole device. Inside of the preset, this area shows you the settings of the keys and the knobs themselves. We know that we're sending information on MIDI channel one. The transposition is in the middle and the octave is in the middle, although this can be changed. We can play an octave up, two octaves up, octave down, two octaves down, but we know when neither are lit that we're on zero. This can be controlled here where we can either go four octaves up or four octaves down, okay? Transposition, we can go 12 uh, octaves up or 12 octaves down, okay? And that controls the board. We have 25 pressure sensitive keys and we can go up 12 octaves in either direction, which is really nice. Okay, the uh, appreciator octave uh, is also editable you can go uh, two or three octaves in either direction. You can enable the appreciator or you can turn it off. All you have to do is highlight it. Same as pushing this button. Now you notice when I press the on off button, the tap tempo is lit up and I can set my tempo by tapping my finger, okay, for the appreciator. Now when I want to set the appreciator, I hold down the on off appreciator key 
and if you notice I have one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, all the way to one thirty second triplets that I can control my appreciator. Okay? This can either be enabled or turned off by pressing the appreciator on off key. And you can tap the tempo because if you look here, the Akai MPK Mini has a internal clock. Okay? You can set it here or you can give it the option to choose your tempo by one tap. I'm sorry, two taps, three taps, or four taps. So here we can set those appreciator notes that we want the appreciator to work at from one fourth to uh, one thirty second triplets. Okay? We can set the appreciator clock to go by the DAW or uh, internal, its own internal clock. Okay? Um, the, with the appreciator itself, we can go in up on the notes down, inclusive, exclusive, random note order or in order as we play them. Okay. So, just to recap, this area controls the keys and the knobs and the uh, appreciator, the transposition and the octave that the keys are playing in saved inside of preset one okay let's dig a little deeper into this dish we're still talking about the settings inside of preset one now we're looking at the knobs on each knob we have control change we have low and we have high basically what these functions are are what channel the control change will be on from 1 through 127. If we click here, I can drag my mouse up or I can type the number in and we can go up from 0 to 127. And that is the amount of the control that this knob has on any particular assignment. So if we assign knob one to control the volume of any given VST, we know that this will be control, cha uh, control change number one. We know that the lowest point being all the way to the left would be zero. The highest point would be 127. And this is totally editable depending on the VST or DAW. The highest point may vary. Or if you are assigning, say, knob one to a modulation or a pitch bend, you may want to narrow these controls in order to make uh, less room for variation. Okay, we may only want to go from 50, from 44 to 67. Okay, this is for each knob. Each knob can receive control changes, low points, and high points. And they all can be saved within a preset. These knobs are editable and they are totally assignable to any control change function, whether it be volume, whether it be panning, whether it be modulation, the amount of reverb applied to a track, the amount of flange, the amount of echo, or I'm sorry, delay, the amount of delay, depending on the VST or depending on the assignment, these knobs control control a wide range of things, but they're totally assignable. Okay. Uh, we have knobs one through eight. There is no bank settings for the knobs. 
So you have two separate bank settings for the pads, but you only have eight knobs. Once again, these knobs are totally editable, totally assignable, and uh, they move pretty freely. Um, they have a limitless amount of possibilities. If you don't have a mixer, you can set these eight knobs up to be channel controls and you could be mixing your eight tracks with these eight knobs and use those these eight knobs to mix. These eight knobs can be control changes, they could be pitch bend editors, they could be panners, or you could use them to mix. They could be a mixer. All eight channels could be this could be your kick drum volume here, your snare drum volume on two, your hi-hat volume on three, your sample volume on four, your background vocal on five, your main vocal on six, or however you want to set this up. Totally editable. This gives you a wide range of options, being that if you can't afford a mixer, if you don't have a mixer, you can control your DAW or VST from the Kai MPK Mini as a mixer. Even though you don't have a mixer, you can set these eight knobs up to be channel controls, which is really awesome. Now, one question that I get a lot about the pads is, how do I put a sample on the pads? How do I control Fruity Loops with the pads? How do I control Reason with the pads? How do I control Logic with the pads? How do I control Pro Tools and Reason with the pads? How do I control GarageBand with the pads? That question is uh, very broad. And these pads, just like the knobs, are totally editable. Okay? Now, when we're looking at these pads, we want to look at them as being totally editable, saved in a preset, which we're working with preset one right now, and viewable as notes or numbers. And we can change the view here. Okay? Also, the pads, which we're looking at bank number one right now, also the pads can be edited to send on a different MIDI channel than the keys and the knobs. Okay? So we have keys, knobs, and then we have the pads here. So let's just say we want to send the keys and the knobs to MIDI channel one in our VST but we want our drums and our samples to be sent on MIDI channel 10. We can do that and we can save that inside of the preset, inside of the MIDI and totally recallable under program one if we save it under preset one. Okay, let's go to pad number one, which corresponds with pad number one here. All pads send one note, one program change, or one control change at a time. We can't set control ranges, control change ranges like the knobs, although we can send one note control changes. We can also set, we could also set up pad number one to send a program change in a sequence. We could set up drums to be on pad one and also the breaks for those drums to be set up on pad one and alternate when we press the pad. And we do that by setting up the control change. Now, when we're talking about different programs such as Fruity Loops, such as Cubase, such as 
Pro Tools, such as uh, VSTs and standalone programs. These notes, program changes, and control changes are set up inside of those particular programs and VSTs. So when we look at the Akai MPK Mini, we have to see that this device is totally editable, but we also have to keep in mind that each program, DAW and VST, have their own settings. So with that in mind, the Akai MPK Mini is editable to the point where we can make its settings adapt to the program or we can use the default settings on the MIDI and change the defaults on the program to adapt to the MIDI or MINI defaults, the Kai MPK MINI defaults. Now, I don't want to get too deep when I say that, so let's go back to pad number one. We can see here that the note being sent from pad number one is G sharp octave one. Totally customizable. I can change this by typing it in. Right now, I just want to drag my mouse up. Let's say we want to change this to note F octave six. That's exactly what note is going to be sent from the Akai MPK Mini every time I hit pad number one. When we go down to program change, we can send any number of commands from 1 through 27 to be saved. Let's just say we want to send program change number 42, and we want to send program change number 19. We s that totally can be saved inside of the MPK under preset 1 with all the other settings inside of preset 1. Although, if we want to access the program change, we have to go to the second set of buttons here. Control change being 1, program change being 2 here. So when these buttons are lit, you know that the control change number 19 setting is being sent when I hit pad number one. Although if we want to send a program change and the setting is number 42, that will be sent when I press pad number one. Hopefully that's not too deep. So we have pad number one totally editable, editable note function can be changed and edited in the MPK mini editor and saved under preset 1 and be sent every time we hit this pad. The note can be sent every time, a control change setting can be sent every time, or a pro uh, program change could be sent every time. Okay, when these aren't highlighted, we're sending notes, control change, control change, program change, program change, notes being sent. So we have eight pads here. We have a bank selection tool which changes to bank number two, which gives us eight additional pads. So when we go from bank one, which we have bank two highlighted here, this is bank two, this controls bank two. So we'll go from pad one here, not to be confused with pad one here, because these, this pad is bank one. This pad is bank two. Same functions, same customizable note changes, same customizable program changes, same customizable 
uh, control changes okay so we can uh, toggle in between which functions we want to use or we can choose momentary okay so second set of pads will save their pads 9 through 16 first set of pads 1 through 8 if you are setting up your MPK as a sampler okay the pad banks are totally unaffected by the keys and knobs area these pads are totally customized to your fitting the note selection that you want you may want to set up C D E F G A B C or you may want to set up B C D G sharp A minor F sharp B minor C sharp totally customizable in pads A um, I'm sorry in pad bank 1 and pad, pad bank 2 all of these settings can be saved inside of the MPK under program number one, number two, number three, or number four. But we're working with program one right now, preset one. Basically, when we hit program and program one, we're asking the Akai MPK Mini to pull up the settings that we have saved in preset one. Okay? So now, once we have all of our settings or we have the M Akai MPK Mini Editor tweaked just right, let's just say we want to save that as a uh, template or save that as a file that we can recall. You may have a VST that needs certain settings inside of the MPK to trigger that particular program the way that you want it triggered although you may have more than one VST that you need to trigger from the Akai MPK Mini. Let's go over how to save those settings. We're still talking about preset one, okay? Once we get all of our settings saved and we want to save a file, we'll click Save Preset, okay? If you notice, we have preset one here. We'll click Save Preset we'll give it a name and put it into whatever file uh, of your choosing you can put it on your desktop or in I don't know my MVK mini file folder and you click save now let's just say I don't know settings are skewed here or you may just be using settings from a different VST inside of your MPK mini editor let's just say you want to recall the settings that you have here in preset one well there's a couple ways that you can do that you can hold down program and hit program one to pull those settings up or you can click load preset now once you click load preset you want to go to the particular preset that you have saved okay you click on that and then you click open and that will return your settings to the same settings that you had when you clicked save preset okay so now being that you can save your presets you have an unlimited amount of control over the Akai MPK Mini, what the pads do, what the keys do, what the knobs do, and these are totally recallable at any point in any given time. We need to have an understanding of how the MPK Mini receives this information from the editor. Basically, inside of this area or this box you want to click and once you have all your settings here you click whichever preset one through four that you want to save all of these settings on 
and you click upload once you click upload you want to make sure that you get this green box that says upload successful that means the NPK mini is communicating with you and saying okay all of the settings that you have on this screen are located in preset one or program one here and that upload is successful so you're uploading from your laptop or your PC or Mac into the MPK and those settings are totally recallable okay you'll click OK to confirm that and communicate with the MPK that it's okay to save those settings now with preset one those same settings apply in preset 2, preset 3, and preset 4 because you have four available presets that you can save totally different settings on the knobs, the keys, the pads, and the appreciator. Now at the beginning of this video you saw in preset 2 that my appreciator lights up. Let's just say we're on preset 4 and I'm controlling a piano in Fruity Loops and I want to open up the Emu Proteus VX but I want to use my appreciator. Well my settings are in program 4 or preset 4 and I'm controlling Fruity Loops but I switch over to the Emu Proteus VX I will just hit program and program 2 and it automatically recalls preset 2 now I'll show you that same function again by hitting preset 4 here and hitting preset 2 here lights up program 4 I'm controlling Fruity Loops. Program 2, I'm controlling my Proteus VX. We have four presets here. In any given preset, we can control the whole Akai MPK Mini, whether it be the keys, the appreciator, the knob settings, or the pads. And the pads have two separate banks we can use control changes we can use program changes we can turn the appreciator on and off we can tap the tempo in of the appreciator we also have a sustain button so if I hit uh, note C sharp with the sustain button held down it will sustain and hold that note until I press it again. We have the program button which controls the presets inside of the Akai MPK Mini. And we also have the octave buttons which control the transposition of the keyboard. We have 25 keys but we can alternate octaves up and octaves down which give us, gives us a wider range of keys that we can use to control various VSTs okay we have uh, the keys and knobs MIDI channel we have the uh, settings for the appreciator which are totally editable on the Akai MPK Mini also basically what the Akai MPK Mini Editor does is saves these presets on the Akai MPK Mini Editor in programs 1 through 4 and it also backs them up on the computer okay the Akai Mini Editor does not <laughs> act as a sampler out of the box it does not act as a mixer out of the box although the settings on the Akai MPK Mini can be 
set up to be a sampler or a mixer given the DAW or program that you are using and I think that's pretty much it once you uh, get your settings saved inside of the editor you want to uh, save your preset inside of your folders or your any given folder for your Akai MPK mini editor you can load your presets from that file that you have saved or that you've downloaded let's say a friend sends you a file uh, via email you can upload that to your uh, mini and uh, you can upload that to any given preset here or program here on the mini by pressing upload once you get the OK you know that it's saved it's there every time until you open the MPK mini editor again now if you have any more questions you can direct them at me in the Facebook group that's uh, facebook.com forward slash MPK mini once again this is Bra Law this is the tutorial for the Akai MPK mini editor